Yo, welcome back now, Nigerians finally have ministers, and um, even I am smiling. It took us six months to get there, and um, I don't know if it was worth it for you. Uh, we're going to be finding out what our analysts think on the show here today. I have you with me, Wale Oshunde. Thanks for being here today. It's and okay. Kayole Oyemaki, Thank thanks for coming. Thank you very much. Okay, let's start. Um, we finally have, I mean, we had ministers last week, but they didn't have portfolios. And now this week, they've been assigned portfolios, and some have resumed office. Uh, a few shocks for some people, a few mergers that were quite interesting for people to notice. I mean... What are your thoughts generally? Well, I think it's just so very much interesting, honestly <laughs> speaking. Uh, but then, I, I want to believe that the president was able to select uh, uh, personalities that uh, he thinks would be able to uh, work very well for him. Uh, only that I was shocked. Uh, I'm very sure a, long, and a number of people were as well taken aback uh, by some fusion you know, uh, of some ministries, especially when uh, a number of people were expecting that there were some very mighty appointments to some very powerful people, yeah. <laughs> you know, within certain circles. Yeah. And then, you know, for me, uh, works, power, housing, very powerful ministries fused into one now. And then uh, for transport, obviously, is another amazing way to actually, uh, for me, compensate some other people. So I think it's quite interesting, and then um, I just want to believe that we still have special advisors, mind you, and then I know that there will be some uh, interesting uh, updates on that as well yeah, uh, you know, in the coming days, exactly. Yeah. We're going to zero in on the personalities, especially those key ministries that caught Nigerians attention, but I want to talk to you about reduction of the number of ministries now. We're now at 24 ministries, I think, and um, it's supposed to help us cut costs, you know. Um, a lot of some states are wondering, uh, is this going to be permanent now, or is it just something that the APC government is doing for now? Do you think it's something that we're going to go back to? Do we need to reform, or sorry, review the constitution to a place where not every state is going to have ministers anymore? Well, um, it is trite for us to review the constitution, but it is not feasible, because which state do you want to remove in the first instance? Lagos State will not have a minister, Ebony State, Akwa Ebon. Even the FCT indigents are crying out now. You can imagine. Because they don't have... <laughs> Moreover, some states, some, some group of, um, some ethnic groups are still clamoring for more states. Which I, in my own personal um, opinion, I don't see any logic in that. The fact is, the president has been able to look into the books of Nigeria. Our funds, our finances, our revenue, and a lot of things like that. And he has realized that it is not possible for him to have a lot of ministries. You have to fuse some. For example, I still see that he has not done one or two, to my own satisfaction, my opinion, though, like communications and um, information should have gone hand in hand. Because to me, the NCC is even more um, powerful than Ministry of um, um, Communications. That's a fact. MTN will fail. They, they will fear NCC before they fear Ministry of Communications. You know what's happening, the fine and so on and so forth. So personally, I believe that if you've seen some ministries in through one, it's trite for this time because we don't have the funds. Everywhere in the whole world, people are crying so, for So it was definitely more. a good move. It let's talk, let's talk about the personalities move. now. And the, you mentioned communications there, and it was actually one of the most interesting for a lot of people because the last minister of ICT we had was quite dynamic. You know, she did a good job for, by a lot of people's standards, really those in that sector of the economy. And now we have um, someone there who people are not necessarily sure about, you know, his pedigree and his background. And uh, Mr. President has said he knows he has put around pegs in round mm -hmm. holes as far as it's concerned. Um, I don't know if you're in the ICT industry. Did that surprise you with the Minister of Communications in particular? Well, the, the, the minister now, uh, a lawyer, you know, um, I actually have reservations about that, to be very honest with you. And then I think I do have reservations with a number of other uh, uh, appointments as well. Like Take which ones? Now? Okay, good. Take, for instance, education. Adamo Adamo is the Honorable Minister for Education and then a Professor of Education, former Vice Chancellor, is Minister of State. So I have reservations about that. Even if, and uh, you know, I, I just want to believe that the, 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 the professor of education should have been made the substantive minister, and then other people can as well come and do administrative balancing for him. You know, then uh, another one, you know, um, I was taken aback when 
the former governor of Ikiti State was announced uh, as minister for solid minerals. I mean, everyone well expecting that he would be foreign affairs minister and all that. This was someone who studied, I mean, he, 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 he bagged his uh, doctorate in war studies. And so you believe that such a person has uh, all it takes to be foreign affairs minister or something, you know, or he would fit properly, uh, you know, in, in the foreign affairs ministry. Uh, not, not, not that alone. I, I want to believe that... Um, if, but if the Minister of Foreign Affairs is not any, any less a worthy person. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree with that. Only that, you know, probably it would have been Minister of State or one of them would have been Minister of State, you know, to, to make do for fantastic balancing, you know, in, in that direction. But then, I know that being a minister, for me, uh, if you look at it the other way, you know that uh, being a minister is just to take administrative responsibilities. And that's the very honest truth. Most of them were former governors who never studied governance or anything and then they did well in their yeah. in their various states and the solid minerals uh, industry is one that needs a lot of work actually Absolutely. so it's probably there to, to go work isn't it oh well <laughs> maybe, maybe that was exactly what yeah. uh, was going on in the mind of the president at that time of the appointment uh, you know um be, be, because in, uh, in allusion to what you've just said i think uh, the former governor of lagos state would fit very well in the ministry of works uh, you yeah. know, and uh, uh, powerful for that matter, because I think that he has all it takes to actually deliver, yeah. uh, you know, uh, on the tenets of that ministry. We'll talk about fashion at the moment, but I want us to go to <laughs> the Ministry of Transport, which, uh, who's uh, Governor Rotimi Amechi, former Governor Rotimi Amechi, who has been in government since 1999 pretty much, and is now a Minister of Transport. We know how his screening went, and especially his clearance or yeah. whatever it was with the PDP senators working out. He ended quite controversially. He has this case hanging over his head, you know, in court with, you know, allegations and all of that running around him. And then he's running a ministry which probably has some of the most powerful parastatals in this country with regards to generating revenue, the MPA, NIMASA, and all of those. Um, he's going to be watched closely. Do you think it's something he can handle? Personally, I have... Um uh, utmost belief in um, Rotimi Amechi. Whether it was an APP, a, a, ACN or APC or PDP then, I always, always admire him. If you go to River State, you will see the, in terms of transportation, what Rotimi did there. River State is another Lagos, actually. What exactly did he do? Transportation, for example, the rail system. Is it working? It's not. It's not. It's not. A, it's not. It's an ongoing now, project. It? It's an ongoing project. Fashola Two was, is currently doing one in Lagos. It is not there right now. So I believe Ambody should be able to continue Completed. the project. And if Wiki, Governor Wiki of River State, is not trying to be a little bit um, vindictive or you know about rooting Miyamichi, I think it, it should continue that. That's if he's still going to be there. You know, the election petition cases, mm -hmm. that's another kettle of fish. Completely but different. But the, the fact is, Dotimi Amechi did well in terms of works in River State, building of schools, hospitals. We saw some. I don't know if you've been to River State before. Fine. Now, bringing Dotimi to the Ministry of Transport, some people will think that uh, just Ministry of Transport. Somebody said that on Facebook a couple of days ago. I was like, do you know Dotimi is controlling over 22 paracetals, big paracetals that can make you cough? The borders, the, in terms of, um, he has, more or less, he's going to work with customs. He's going to work with Ministry of Foreign Affairs. He's going to work with um, com, uh, Minister of Housing, I'm um, sorry, of Works and the likes like that. Even housing, they may need to demolish one, one or two houses <laughs> for some rails to pasture, some real tracks. So I believe he's going to function. And Buhari, General, um, President Buhari sat down. He looked at those who he was appointing, and I think he really kept well, not 100% to my own opinion, but I think he did well.